Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. Em's currently out of town right now, so it's just me for this week, but I wanted to give some thoughts on the new season of the CGI He-Man and the Masters of the Universe. I'm going to be discussing spoilers in this review, so here's your warning for that. Check out the season already if you haven't. I definitely recommend it, it's a lot of fun. This season picks up where the previous left off. Skeletor has taken over Eternos, and our heroes just barely managed to escape. Although Tila, Orko, and King Randor were left behind, so they're separated for a good chunk of the season. There's a lot of tension, but it makes sure to keep things lighthearted. Admittedly, the humor is pretty childish and it still hasn't grown on me, but given the target audience, it's not a big deal. A running gag in the show is that Castle Grayskull apparently doesn't have a bathroom, which is a major problem and one they don't really seem that interested in fixing. Apparently, they just go wherever, which is really weird and unhygienic, and they don't explain why they don't do anything about that. I guess it's just supposed to be a joke, so it is what it is. Still weird though, I'm just not a big fan of toilet humor. Admittedly, I didn't think an episode focusing on Duncan and Skeletor would work, but it was actually pretty charming, although I'm not sure if it'll really do any good for Skeletor. He seems pretty set in his ways, but I still enjoyed the character development, especially from Duncan. There are a lot of references and nods that older fans can appreciate though, like there's one comedic scene where He-Man and Skeletor are dancing together, and I'm pretty sure it's a reference to that one commercial. So it's fun for kids, but also people who understand the reference can get a real kick out of it. We get to see some old characters return in a new form. Admittedly, I was kind of disappointed to see that Triclops is just a robot now, and I don't mean like Orko who has a unique personality, it's just a robot that mind controls people. But we get to see Manny faces with his theatrics, and they also introduce Stratos, although here he's a cocky hothead, and at first I was worried they were going to make him a jerk, but he actually has a solid character arc, so he's still pretty cool. We get a lot of interesting character development this season, it was good to see Adam interact with his dad, and finally get to address his past after after so long. They mention his mother, although they don't talk about what happened to her. I hope we get more information on his family in the third season. I don't know if they'll bring in Adora at all, or if that's even an option, but it would be nice to see the four of them together again, and Adam can finally reunite and get to know his whole family. A major focus of the season, especially towards the end of it, was Crass's character. At first she's disappointed that all the others have a nemesis, but she doesn't. Human and Skeletor, Duncan and Trapjaw, etc. She also hasn't gotten a power-up move like the others have. Have, and she's feeling a bit left out and unfulfilled. On top of that, she's feeling jealous since Adam wants to spend more time in Eternos and with his father, and he's probably going to end up leaving the Tiger Tribe now, which stresses her out to the point where she's basically afraid of being abandoned by him. She tails Adam and his dad as they're having a conversation. This is the only part of the season I had a major problem with. They do that trope where somebody overhears part of a conversation and then runs off before getting the full context. That just happens to be one of my least favorite tropes, probably in my top 5 most hated personally. But Crass ends up using this as motivation to go rogue, declaring herself as the fifth nemesis, and attacking Adam. To be fair, there's a lot more to it than just the misunderstanding. It turns out the gem in her helmet is connected to the snake men and seems to be corrupting her. To make matters worse, Skeletor is in her head influencing her. Long story there. Basically, they defeated the villain, but it turns out he's not actually gone, so that's a whole thing. Kinda wish she had told the others about that. But I could imagine that driving anyone crazy. So there's certainly a lot of intrigue for season 3. I just wish they hadn't pulled that trope. I think her fall could have worked without it. Crass believes that Adam doesn't care about her, but it's revealed that he wants her to stay in Eternos with him because he sees her as a sister. She just conveniently misses that part when she's listening to their conversation. So maybe instead of the conflict coming from her misunderstanding and assuming he doesn't want to stay with her, she can just have it that she wants to go back to the Tiger Tribe and have him come back too. Then maybe when faced with the choice of staying with the Tiger Tribe or staying with Adam and Eternos, that's when she could go off to find the truth about her own history, to get more context and try to make a decision, only to discover her ties to the Snake Men, and that's what ultimately leads to her fall to darkness. It's not that the way it happens is bad, it's just my own personal biases. But she ends up becoming a villain, calling herself Rampage, which is admittedly a much better name than Ram Ma'am, and it'll be interesting to see how all this is dealt with in the next season. So over Overall, the show has a lot of good characters, intriguing storylines, and it's also nice to have a He-Man show that actually features He-Man and Skeletor, but also delivers and actually giving focus to other characters in an interesting and meaningful way. And I'm looking forward to seeing how they expand on everyone in the next season, not just the main story of Crass and Adam. They also tease Eldris at the end of the season, who's been MIA this entire time, but it also looks like she's not stuck in her astral form anymore. So it seems there's a lot to look forward to, but that's my thoughts. What do you guys think? 
think. How are you liking this series so far? I'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, it's appreciated. Before I go, I want to give a quick shout out to our members. Stutania, Tyrant Carnivore, Adam K, Shiny Orc Boy, The Rabbit Mancer, Hunter Rose, General Bolivar, Depth Charge Media, Samaru163, Gabby Hime, Sandy Martin, Verdant Range, Butcher7 Actual, Dash Hound, JVR, Hussyman42, Nixel, Eric Griffin, Phantom of the Night, Phil C, Taylor Ramirez, Caleb Nelson, Shrike Z, and Bandito Bane. Thanks so much for your support. If you'd like to become a member, you can hit the join button next to the subscribe button. We also have Buy Me Coffee if you want to support us that way. Or you can leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe to the channel. Those are free. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. Mm -hmm.